Hi, and welcome to the It's Just Business podcast with myself, Richard Price. In this podcast, I interview some of the best business minds and entrepreneurs, diving deep into their business journey to get those valuable business lessons they have learned for entrepreneurs like you to succeed on your business journey. So listen up, listen in, let's begin. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another fantastic episode of It's Just Business. It's myself, Richard Price, and today I'm joined by a lovely guest, Martha Swift, and she is the proud owner of Primrose Bakery. Hi, Martha. How are you? Hi, good. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me on. Great to be here. Thank you for coming and sharing your, your time with us. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, so I guess to kick things off, off, tell us a bit more about you know Primrose Bakery and yourself. Uh, I founded Primrose Bakery actually with a friend of mine. Uh, it's going to be 17 years ago this year, which seemed unbelievable, really. Uh, we there were two of us. Um, I bought her out about probably eight, eight, nine years ago now. And but we started it in our respective home kitchens and really didn't know a lot about business, which is a terrible thing to say when you know, trying to give advice on starting a business. <laughs> We'd went, we did a night course at Westminster City College, um, which actually was, I, do you know, what, I don't even remember much about it. I'd like to say it was a great thing that I did, but I, I, don't, I just remember sitting there with loads of uh, cans of Diet Coke and like trying to stay awake. <laughs> and so that wasn't great. But I just always had... Um, I always loved cakes and I always had a desire to have my own business. And at that time, there really wasn't many cake shops slash cake kind of cakes that I felt that were missing in the UK at that time. So mm. it really was literally a case of deciding we did, you know, we kind of ummed and ahed for probably a year about whether we mm. could do it and what we should do. And a um, deli opened in our where we live. Uh, we both lived in Primrose Hill anyway mm, mm. and they wanted someone to supply their cakes and cupcakes and we just thought look let's just give it a go and see what happens and kept mm. it quite loose in that let's try it see what happens yeah and if it doesn't work it doesn't work because we were doing it at home we had very few costs and I think that probably was key as well because we didn't really have yeah. any outlay or overheads um, yeah. because that's probably the biggest obstacle at the beginning. It's one. Of, it's, it's a great way, and it's, it's, it's quite a trend that I've, I've been hearing, just ways to validate your idea. And at each point, you get more conviction that this is actually going to exactly. work. Exactly, yeah. Because at the beginning, you're first of all, if you're creating a product or even selling a product, you know, it's quite – just because you think it's great doesn't mean that everybody's going to think it's great. And so you can mm. be really passionate about it, but – and I even have this now. We test out ideas now, and this is 17 years on. And I think, like, oh, I've, I've got an idea, you know, oh, this could work, and it doesn't always work. So, mm. right at the beginning, to actually, and also not to set yourself up for some to to go in too deep. So we mm. started very limited. So in, because we did cakes, we started with a very limited range, and I think again, it gave us the confidence to A, mm. get good at what we were doing, and mm. B, just to see how people reacted. So instead of making 50 types of cakes, I think we kept it to literally chocolate and vanilla cupcakes and a few types of cakes and maybe some cookies, and that was it. And we just did it day after day. Right, right. So constantly just perfecting that recipe, yeah. that process. Because with anything, any business, any product, really, it's consistency um mm. especially with baking obviously consistency is key but I think any product because you could have a great product for like three days mm. and then mm. if you can't supply it on the fourth day whatever it is it, what's the point so it's yeah. it's learning about consistency and being able to follow through on what you've promised because we yeah. could all say we can make 500 cakes tomorrow but could you do 500 cakes tomorrow, the next day, the one after, the one after? And can you just always turn up on time and, and do what you say you're going to do, really? 
Mm, mm, mm. Absolutely. Being consistency and showing up. I mean, I think um, one of the things I always say is, you know, a, a brand essentially is like delivering on your promise over and over again. Yeah. And once you promise and you're also asking people to pay money for something, yeah. well, however much it is, whether it's a lot of money or a little, you've kind of entered into an agreement where you have promised them something. So mm. they don't really care if you're not feeling well or, I don't know, one of your kids is sick or you're having a bad day or you just don't fancy working. It, they're not mm. interested. Why should they be? And that's really true from day one to, to now. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Just give me my cakes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they don't, you know, they have a tiny bit of sympathy, maybe if you say something's happened, but not really. You know, they want cakes for a birthday, a wedding, an anniversary, a goodbye, good luck present. And mm. they're not that interested in what you've got going on. Why should they be? Mm. They paid for a product, mm. so therefore they want it. So interesting. Um, so you, you you began supplying this deli shop with your cakes from your beloved kitchen. Um, how long did you go through that process? What and uh, Until you started maybe, you know, you used you had to make too many cakes or you had to hire did you hire first or did you look to open up a shop first as you you and your partner uh we did two years at home in our homes and in that time we built up a we ended up employing a couple of people but we did it step by step so we we kind of tried and we didn't leave our home kitchens I mean probably we left it a bit late but because the poor kitchens have been really overused but until mm. we were confident that we had enough custom to open mm. a shop because also the bank was not that interested in we had to put in as much money as the bank would lend us you know obviously that right. was a long time ago and things are slightly different now but it was to show willing that we believed in our product as much as we wanted them to believe in it mm. and in that two years we you know, lucky things happen. I mean, luck and hard work. But yeah, we had a couple of lucky, I guess, because I don't know, we were in the right place at the right time. And someone approached mm. us uh, who had bought our cakes in the deli and uh, wanted to, us to supply Selfridges. So oh, right. we, again, it was supposed to be a six week thing. So we said yes. And I think it turned into about six years. But again, because they'd said six weeks, it seemed manageable. Yeah, yeah. And so we thought, you know, this is quite, I mean, this is quite a frightening thought, but why not? We, I mean, if you get asked to supply Selfridges Food Hall, how could you turn that down? Absolutely. So um, we did that and we built up a few other, we approached Liberties, um, sorry, Fortnum Mason, and said, right. would you like our cakes? And they luckily said yes. So we started with all these wholesale places oh. and sort of built up our confidence also not only in the cake but also in the logistics how to deliver cakes how to turn mm. up on time how to make sure you've got ingredients so all the bits that are just as important as the finished product really i find it great how you've kind of you were stepping up each time you know and then is it is it that that you you managed to secure selfages and that gave you a bit of leverage or a bit of like huspa to kind of go yeah, into. Yeah, I think yes, because of course, and as soon people, as soon as people hear that you're supplying someone like Selfridges or Fortnum's, they feel that's given it some kind of credibility. It's like if mm. famous people buy the cakes, mm. suddenly that means the cakes are okay. Mm. So yes. um, as soon as you sell, um, I sell my cakes in Selfridges Food Hall, they stop thinking, oh, they're the girls that make the cakes in their home kitchen and it becomes like oh I want those cakes because they're in Selfridges yeah, yeah um yeah. so it's kind of chicken and egg and it works together but it gave yeah. us also again you know going to deliver it and the thing about food that's different to sort of uh, clothing or jewelry or any kind of other product is that mm. it has to be made fresh every day so you're delivering mm. to these places every single day mm. and if you do all those jobs yourself as well, then you always know what they entail. So even though now I'm lucky I have two delivery drivers, mm. if needed, I can do deliveries as well. I also know that some of the nicest people you'll meet, for instance, are the loading, the staff that work in the loading bay at Selfridges. You know, you get you develop mm. these relationships with people because you're there mm. every single day. So you spend more time with them than people you actually know. Yeah, um, yeah, but the, these are the people that are key as well because 
you know, they're looking at you hand over your product and they've got to look after it. So it's also yeah. about developing relationships with them. Mm, and mm. they get used to seeing you and they know you're going to be there. Um, and again, you know, as I was saying, it's about showing up and delivering your promise mm. to, to what you've said you're going to do. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And in speaking of sort of supply chain management, as you've you know alluded to, how how typically does that or did that work for you back back in those times? Were you up all night baking cakes for the yeah. next morning? Um yeah, is that pretty much it? <laughs> yeah, and you kind of, once you've, uh, even, I mean, to this day, to be honest with you, once you've said you're going to do it, you've got to do it and you have to make yeah. it work. Yeah. And yeah. so if if Selfridges want something, I mean, it, typically, again, with food, especially with baking, I mean, we don't do bread, but bread would really be the same as cakes. It's an early start always. Um mm, mm. And we do everything freshly every day. Um, we don't really use any preservatives or additives or anything like mm. that. Hence, mm. we make everything fresh always, mm. always have done. So it's seven days a week. And that's mm. the other thing, of course, about business is mostly most businesses that you start yourself are seven days mm. a week. You can't think of it like, oh, you know, it's Monday to Friday or I don't fancy it or I'm going to take a couple of days off or that yeah. that's and if you go into it with that mindset then you're really going to quickly be disappointed it the, the 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 romantic idea of starting your business is nice but you know many people don't know the fact that you know it, it does take over your life for yeah a good period yeah. of time um yeah have you you know saying that have you been able to step back a bit you know like a, in the early days you're always quite hands-on um but at, you know at some point you you want to try to get a manager or someone else to, and it's never quite easy, you know, depending on what business it is, et cetera. It's hard. It's hard to take, it's hard to pass on responsibility. I would say yes. actually, oddly, there was a period in the middle of the 17 years where I was maybe less involved. And now I feel like I've gone back more hands-on. I mean, I'm extremely lucky in that I have two grown up daughters and mm. they both work with me. My younger mm. one, um, is on maternity leave at the moment, but my elder one uh, works with me every day. And I do feel that that has been game changing for me, really. Right. Because right. it's someone else who's who's as invested in the business mm. as I am mm. emotionally. And, and I have amazing, amazing staff. Uh, don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, it is a job for them. And for us, yeah. it, it's much more than a job because it's, you know, yeah. everything depends on it. Yeah. No, absolutely. They got a, a vested interest to make sure that 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 cake is. Yeah, a... and they have the you know they they have the they just have much connection. more yeah connection with it. And yeah. I guess because they both have known it since they were relatively young. I mean, mm. they're probably like sick and tired of it, but the fact they're involved and because I wanted this idea of a family business and to actually, mm. I think to to have a neighborhood business and a family business, whatever that business is, mm. and then to actually keep to that, not to say I have a family business, I have a neighborhood business, but then I'm never there, right. kind of defeats the purpose. Right, yes, yes, yeah. Rather than, you know, you're, you've got a family business, but you're gallivanting around in Marbella. Yeah, yeah. I mean, then it's <laughs> kind of, and I think that customers really like to, to see you there. Of course. You know, I'm lucky again, my daughter's there, you know, more or less every day as well. So they mm. kind of, if they don't see me, they see her and they know mm. we're around. Mm. And I think customers like it because it makes it more credible again. Mm. It's like, mm. well, they'd really like their business. They're always there. So, you know, that's kind of a good sign. And they yeah. still work in their business. And I think that that, I do think that makes a difference. I mean, the downside is you're much more tied to your business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it is harder. And also the problem is when you have your own business, you become very attached to it. You know, I don't You're really right. know where my non-business life starts and ends. You know, it's all mm. it's all the same thing, really. I couldn't say my work stops here and then it starts here. You know, work is just is all day, every Half. day. And yeah. So it Fully does have integrated. a downside. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. And I wouldn't change it, but it's quite... It's a big responsibility. 
you've done you've done very well to you know to to, to kind of build this up over the over the years with um you know I was going to ask you how it was raising your two girls and having this sort of seven a day a week job yeah, which... it was hard and I feel they probably lost out you know I mean they were always yeah. really good natured about it but looking back probably I could have I'm sure at the beginning I should have been a bit firmer about stopping work and mm. spending more time with them I can't change that obviously I get to mm. work with them now so that's really good mm. um but it's hard because it becomes consuming and if mm. you're building something it really takes over and you always want to do the next thing and the next thing and you want to always keep learning and you know keep growing and to grow a business you really have to invest so much time into it that it is hard you know a lot of other stuff gets pushed out of the way yeah no absolutely um you know it's it's a a huge commitment and i think um you know many many businesses or business owners um go through that same that same challenge um i just um have you ever been tempted to to you know make an exit is it is it like that that much a part of you that you're like this is this is it I have some I mean I have I have moments from like oh my god I can't do this anymore uh <laughs> and then I think wow if I didn't have it what would I do I mean yes at some point right. obviously I would actually you know contrary to what a lot of people have experienced lockdown and the last year have probably been one of the best times for the business business performance or everything right everything right. I'd say the few years before that were hard were tough I ended up having three shops um mm. and I had one in Covent Garden for 10 years and then the lease came up and mm. it was just too expensive so I closed it and that, I've always had the one in Primrose Hill one in Primrose Hill has mm. been there 15 years right um right. Then uh, I opened one in Kensington as well, and I had that for about yeah. four years. And I always used to think that you kind of were only a success if you had more shops. Yes. But more shops also brings with it many more overheads and um, sort of having staff in different places where you can't see what's going on. Mm. And to be honest with you, I'm so, I've am so i gone back to one shop and just by not because of lockdown or covid but i'd already decided to do that and it had you know mm. got quite tough because you mm. know even before corona came along businesses were struggling you know yes. i think that's got forgotten now but you know pre 2020 a lot of businesses were finding it hard with rents and rates and it's hard it's very you know if you especially if you're making food where there's a relatively low profit margin Mm, to also mm. pay rent, business rates, insurance, um, mm. bills to co- get rubbish collected. I mean, from the things that people wouldn't even believe you have to pay by having actual premises, it's just not sustainable. But because then Corona came, it that all got that seems to have been forgotten, and now it's just oh well, because of Corona, you know, loads of businesses are closing. But the high yeah. street was struggling before that. Um, and I think the year or two before last year were really tough for the business. And so, mm. and also I ended up just sort of, I still loved what I did, but it was an awful lot of paperwork and admin. And then mm. lockdown happened and we almost went back to basics mm. in mm. that we, that for a long time, a lot of the other staff couldn't work and we really wanted to stay open and we could because although a lot of people don't think cake's essential, it is classed as a food, so we could be open. Mm, and mm. I felt like we didn't really have a choice that we had to keep going. Right. And it allowed me to go back and do what I really enjoyed. It was like going back to the beginning. Okay. And okay. just being really involved in it. And, you know, I started it because I loved cake and I wanted to have my own business and do all those mm. things that that – and the problem is, as your business grows, you stop doing all the things that you liked doing mm. and you start running the business and dealing with staff and bills mm. and outside things. And you do mm. much less of the stuff that you really enjoy doing. That's interesting. So was you was it that you were more hands on during that yeah. period? So I was back to really working in the shop and 
ice and cakes again and really seeing what we sold what we didn't sell what mm. what worked what didn't work mm. you know mm. really understanding more what the customers wanted and they didn't want and i think also because so many places closed mm. you've got to see a lot more people and what they actually wanted and we worked out you know it was because it became I mean it was like it was even more full-on than the work had been before because there, for a mm. period of time there were four or five of us you know at the moment I have 13 staff and okay. for a good four or five months there were five of us who did everything right, right. so you right. can see that by halving it or even more than halving it you kind of had tripled your workload Right. But it right, was really right. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, you know, it's been quite a, a common theme to some businesses in that it's been a big reset and a chance to rethink, rejig, be a bit more efficient, a bit more smarter, exactly. and also tag tag on new parts of the business or focus on new parts of the business, which which bears more fruits. Exactly, and you learn, yeah. And I think also the real key to business, whether you're day one or year 17, is that you've got to be open to new ideas and learning things. As mm. soon as you think you know it yes. all, you may as well pack up. Yeah. Because you yeah. can, you always keep learning. You can learn from people younger than yourself, older than yourself, you know, contemporaries, people in different businesses. You know, once mm. you have a business you have a lot of similarities to lots of other businesses and it's always yeah. interesting to talk to people who work in different fields, but it's also, yeah. you can learn so much from your staff. You can learn from anyone around you. Um, and if you're not interested in learning or being open to new ideas, mm. then you're not going to get very far and you yeah. get things wrong. You know, you have to be, it's very frustrating at times to realize, you know, okay, I, I came up with an idea, it didn't work, I made a mistake. Mm. Mm. But you have to be able to kind of admit to that and also learn from it. And mistakes still happen. Mm. And some ideas are not good ideas. Annoying as that is, you have to just get on with it. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's where the biggest lessons come, really, and the most yeah. valuable lessons from those mistakes. And again, as you said, you know, you kind of have to have a growth mindset, you know, con no, not a fixed mindset. And there's this, you know, there's a book, a book about this as well. Um, yeah, because otherwise you'll be stagnant or you'll be stuck in your ways. And people are, you know, if people are willing to help you or advise you or come up with suggestions. Yeah. Then you're so lucky because you can always learn from from people around you always. And it doesn't it's mm. that's not dependent on age or what they do as a job or it's just really really interesting and i think to stay open minded is really important yeah yeah definitely martha um i just wanted to touch on your experience trying to expand the business um i think um this is something also quite common that you you'll have these sort of a business owner have a great ambitions um want to expand the team if if they're painter or you know shops but then it becomes like a, la a labor of love and too much to sort of handle. And you, you come back into sort of, you know, your, 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 what you originally knew. Um, what, what, what challenges did you, or what lessons did you learn from that in terms of perhaps the rent was too high? Was it too ambitious? Was it too optimistic? Or was it simply that you saw a degradation of the, the high street over that, that, that period of time. So it was good at the beginning and then, if you know halfway in it was like just dwindling what what was your experience there? i think it's a combination of all of those things i think right when i opened the shop in covent garden it it was all great because the high street was still going well but i think the reality is for a product such as food it's pretty hard to have multiple outlets unless you are starbucks or a mm -hmm. big chain that has a lot of backing and a lot of manpower if you're one person trying to do that mm. and dealing with with everything involved with that and i think i i said before the fact that you've you can't be in three places at once um so you end up you know i probably it's at one point when i had all three shops i might have had like 25 staff so suddenly mm. you've got 25 people's salaries 
Mm. And you've got to keep an eye on 25 people. As great as they mm. are and responsible as they are, they all have bad days. And to be honest, you know, they all, I don't know, some days they're not into it and they're not, in, you know, they are going to come to work. They're always going to get paid, regardless if I take yeah. £10 or 10000 yeah. They're still getting their wage. Yeah. So they're not that fast. I mean, you know, they're coming to work and they're going home. Who can blame them? I would be the same as well. Doesn't mean yeah. why does it matter? Yeah. So yeah. it's impossible then to get round to three shops or even two shops every day. Mm. Mm. I think it's a challenge. You know, I think obviously people do do it and it's great. I think it tends then your business grows and you maybe get investment or you get bought out by a bigger company, obviously, mm. who then are much better equipped to turn it into a much bigger thing I mean I think I've kind of probably I made lots of mistakes doing it but I've kept it more I guess unique so mm. that is harder because it's mm. got much more of our individual touches to it which is going to be yeah. harder to replicate yeah. but at, when I closed Covent Garden and then I closed the Kensington shop I really thought I was a failure and right. I had to change yes. my mindset. I really thought I'd failed. And I thought people must think that I'm terrible at what I do. And mm. how could I have failed? But you've got mm. to think like it's not always a failure to go back. Not I think all. it would have yeah. been a failure to keep them going and then just it be a disaster. At least I got out of both of them when I was in a position yeah. to do so. Yeah. Yeah. And as it yeah, turned out, point. thank God, because if I'd had them during the last year, I think that would have been awful. I'd have definitely definitely well kind of a fort fortuitous yeah. time timing almost um yeah yeah no interesting um i think um let's kind of talk a bit more about sort of primrose bakery as it is today and and cuz i think you got lots of things on as you what you offer as a as a service not just cakes not just cupcakes as many other things so just just give us a bit of a rundown as to how your business is sort of shaped up? Uh, I think, um, I mean, obviously it's mostly cupcakes and cakes. So we offer a takeaway at the moment. We used to have people could sit in. Obviously last year that's not been possible. Um, you can come in every day. We're open seven days a week. Um, we always have a full shop of cakes, uh, cupcakes, um, biscuits, slices, croissants, and then uh, we have a huge range of other things that people order online or in person, um, birthday cake, I mean, really any kind of cake within the range yeah. that we do, um, but yeah. lots of different flavors, types, shapes, sizes, uh, things for different times of the year. Uh, we also recently launched a DIY box, which can now um, ship kind of all over the UK, so where you can make your own cake. Uh, right. okay. There are um, five from Rose Bakery cookbooks, which is great. So, again, they, they have a wider reach than obviously just London. We deliver cakes all over London seven days a week. Um, mm -hmm. So it's pretty. we do our own sort of branded merchandise, tea towels, bags, aprons. We have a, a range of cards and gifts, not sort of it's anything loosely associated for, with an occasion you might need a cake for so you come to get a mm. birthday cake and you know you need a birthday card or some wrapping paper it's not mm. sort of overwhelming but again it, it's just an added extra for people um mm. you know just to help them out and again during lockdown that's been great because so many other shops have been closed yeah, uh, yeah. so it's given them access to that we do tea coffee milkshakes cold drinks Again, the focus, the priority is the cakes, but we try yes. and make these added extras so that it makes it a really good experience for the customer. It sounds like you've got a lot going on. Like it, you, you've got like um, a lot of flavors of cakes. I imagine it sounds like you've got a good wide range of cakes yes. available at any time. Well, I think, you know, we started with two flavors, as I said, chocolate and vanilla. Yeah. And I think yeah. now, not we don't make them in the shop every day, but I think we now have over 70 flavors of cupcakes that you can order from and also lots of different larger cakes. So we come up with new ideas again, yeah. so like the, the, like the early days, we, lots of people used to say, Oh, why don't you do sandwiches? Why don't you do that? So, but I don't want to do yeah. that. I want to be a specialist cake shop. And if we make sandwiches, yeah. then I've got to take someone off making cakes and put them on sandwiches. 
Mm. And mm. I don't want that. I want to be a specialist shop. Mm. But we come up with new ideas, but then they're tested. It's not like someone says, oh, can you do this? And we just do it. So we yeah. try and stick to what we feel confident in selling mm. someone. I don't want to sell someone a, a cake where they're not happy with it or they feel they've been ripped off or the flavor's not nice. So sometimes people mm. ask us for things. Very popular at the moment is to have a sugar-free cake, but mm. that's incredibly hard to do, completely mm. sugar-free cake. Mm. And mm. I don't want to sell someone something just because I can say, okay, I can take the sale. I'd rather not yeah. sell it to them. I'm sure there yeah. are places that do a great sugar-free cake. We don't have one yet, so I don't want to sell it to anyone. Right, right, rightly so, rightly so. Because if you spread yourself too thin, again, a bit like in the beginning, and that's true even yeah. now, if you spread yourself too thin, you, you lose quality. Mm, mm, yeah, yeah, and you don't, that, that's sort of a, a sort of non-negotiable, really, as a business owner, yeah. you want your quality to be of a high standard as possible again the consistency so whether you've got two flavors of cupcakes or 70 flavors of cupcakes the consistency has to be the same every day day in day out and if you lose that you've kind of you've got a problem it's a bit like not being open to learning things because as soon as you know it all you think oh this stuff really got this sorted i'll sit back and just enjoy you know the success of my business mm-hmm. yeah it's only downhill yeah. from there on Absolutely. So you've got 70 flavors of cakes, roughly. Cupcakes, so you, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cupcakes. But in your shop on a daily basis, you don't make these 70, you make a No, smaller... we might have uh, 10 flavors every day. Okay. okay. And then we might have different types of larger cakes, biscuits. Um, we make all our own croissants every morning. Yeah. Um, there's a big range. And then obviously, so people might come in for just one cupcake and a coffee or they might Mm. tomorrow we're doing a big order for a pharmaceutical company we often um, do orders for where they've ordered 250 cupcakes for St Patrick's Day so it's a really big variety so you don't you're never bored really I guess that's the great thing about catering um, or, or cakes especially you can have your your retail customers your you know local customers but also you can have big sort of corporates or um yeah I mean, there's, I mean, mostly and kind of people always need cake and yeah. usually always really like cake. So oh, yes. it should be a really kind of happy job to be in because usually you're providing, whether it's a cake for a kid after school or a birthday cake or as it said, these cakes for St. Patrick's Day tomorrow for the company to give their staff. It's a it's a nice thing to be doing. Mm, and, mm. you know, mostly people are just so happy to to receive cake or eat cake. I won't yeah, say everyone, yeah. but the majority of people. Well, I'll put my I'll put myself in that in that bucket so. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, and my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, the I mean the, the downside I would say of the last year is that, and I kind of understand it, and we've all had, you know, a difficult time. Yeah. So people have got a lot more. Um, I think aggressive is quite a strong word, but a lot more fraught. Mm. so even with mm. something like cake and mm. this is a downside to having your own business for sure and mm. especially something where you're serving the public is that mm. you open yourself up to i mean 98 percent of people are delightful mm. and a pleasure to work with and a real joy to go to work and then two percent can ruin it for everyone yes yeah and i yeah. think that's what everyone would say is that sometimes working and serving people it's leaves you a bit astonished at how people behave and Mm. that has got worse in the last eight months I would say eight twelve months I think that also when people are buying cakes especially for a birthday or an occasion you know people have a lot invested in these you know it's only a cake but for it's you know a centerpiece of an occasion or a gift for somebody I think perhaps they maybe it's an occasion they're a little bit stressed about so the stress level rises I think lockdown has caused much more genuine stress for people Mm. but I think you are a bit of a sitting duck for people if they're having a bad day to kind of just let rip and I Mm. I find it still even now 17 years on quite upsetting how people can behave and the problem Mm. is yes the customer is always right but to be honest they're not always right but you have limited 
limited things you can say. And yeah. it is very frustrating sometimes when people feel they can just say whatever they want to say or or give feedback on TripAdvisor or mm, mm. other outlets where it's not actually the truth. Yeah, I know. I think um, I think you're right. I think, you know, especially last year, people are, are, are or even now going through a lot. And yeah, they probably are looking for something to take it out on. No, you know, no one's really really happy and they probably you know have these super high expectations of this cake and what it's going to do and then you know because they're stuck indoors and then you know perhaps you know it, it's not as they dreamed of because in, the, in their four walls and um then they'll, they'll go on sort of um they've got loads of time so they'll go on TripAdvisor yes, or they'll go time. on they'll go on google maps and leave a bad review and you know um yeah it's you know it's somewhat disheartening but you, you know yeah. i guess you you have to you have to roll the punches and i guess you have a whole you know that 98 percent of of customers over the, the the years that have given you praise and come back again which yeah and you know a huge amount a, a huge amount of people who are just really you know a pleasure to supply cakes to so you're right mm. you have to hold on to that for sure and of course as soon as you have a business where you're charging money for a product you have to take that on you know some people will not like what you do mm. and that's something you just have to get on with really but yeah. it can be tough it's hard and people i think forget that they're speaking to real people when they speak mm. you know we're all entitled mm. to complain about things for sure i mean we all have problems with things but yep. there's a way of phrasing it, there's a way of talking to people, there's a way of remembering that people are still people. They may be working in the cake shop and you may want to have a go at them, but just remember everyone's a human being, I think. Yeah, yeah. And I think yeah. that's true just from having a business. It's probably, especially where a shop's involved and you're dealing with general public, that's probably one of the big downsides and probably something that most people, if you work in an office or you and not involved with the general public you kind of don't see the extent of that absolutely absolutely yeah and it and again as you're right you've got this general public and especially if you're on a high street you know you might have you know 100 customers for the day and that's 100 touch points 100 opportunities for a customer not to be happy or yeah. you know for or you know you might get a grouchy one it's, you know so it's um you, there's there's as you say there's many opportunities for for um the customers to just you know be a bit unreasonable in terms of um marketing martha i mean I, th I saw you have a whatsapp number as well on your web on yeah. your website you have classes um uh, that's um another i guess a uh, string to the bow um what, what sort of marketing do you sort of engage with how do you sort of think about we really the word out um, word of mouth is usually okay. the best form of um publicity um mm. our instagram is very very popular to run mm. by my daughter um she's done an amazing <laughs> job with it and far better job than i could do and that's you know and, and don't forget 17 years ago there really wasn't this stuff even we didn't have a website obviously i mean yeah. it, it's so amazing how much things have changed and again yeah. i think that's the reason why unfortunately you don't need as many premises because Mm. Our website now, and that's true for a lot of businesses, mostly people go online, either on their phones mm. or, you know, their laptops or whatever, to to find out about things and to order things. Mm. Um, mm. So, yes, our website is great for us. Our Instagram is great. Uh, we do WhatsApp so that if people, you know, just want a message to order a cake, they can do it. Um, right. We've tried to make it as easy as possible to communicate with so so a customer can have many different channels to yeah. come and contact you really email phone whatsapp yeah instagram the website so that first of all there's a lot of information out there so the stuff on our instagram is slightly slightly different sometimes from what's on our website in that you'll get a really good examples of all the different things we do or one-offs or mm. a special occasion of, of of introducing the customers to things Mm. the latest things mm. or new things or one-off things that you know they can pick up on really quickly mm. whereas the website is the things that are always there and they mm. can look at you know and really study what flavors um whatsapp you know someone wants a cake or cu cupcakes in half an hour they can whatsapp us and they can get it 
it's trying right. to make it as easy as I, I mean I think we've all had experiences thank god not as much now but where service used to be awful in lots of places you'd phone up somewhere you'd be on hold for two hours or no one would answer the phone or no one would phone you back or yeah. you'd get a really stroppy person answering the phone yeah. and yeah. I think one of the really important things is you can have a great product of whatever kind but if you can't sell it you may as well not bother um you've got to have both you know you have to be able to sell it and sell it well not not I don't mean mm. over you know upselling all the time but just really know your product and really be willing to help by whatever channel a customer prefers to communicate mm. by and everyone is you know doing stuff online aren't they on their phones you know that that's the age we live in now so that's somewhere you had to move you know it sounds even strange saying it now because someone's starting a business now it would be second nature to them but obviously in the mm. early days there just wasn't you know that wasn't an option yeah yeah no absolutely um i remember the times when mobile phones just came out and uh the only person who called me was my mum. so uh, yeah i do remember yeah i i was <laughs> i was pregnant with my first child and there was they were just starting out and it was like should i get one just so in case something happens and i need to phone someone and then it was always yeah. going to be once they gave birth they could they'd just take the phone back yeah because yeah, you know, it wouldn't yeah. be why would you need a phone and it just <laughs> seems so strange now um but even like in the early days of the business it just and looking back now I mean the thought of like doing all this so much of our business online and with Instagram Mm. and you just would never have believed it Mm, 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 absolutely so it's almost like taken over and 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 on that point um how have you found the your online the online part of your business has it rocketed over the last year or um has it been sort of yeah steady? I think so for sure uh especially yeah. over the last year because people have you know we've had many more people that um order online because obviously we offer this delivery service all over London and so it's pretty easy to order online and we even do next day delivery and so on right and I think that I have to say the WhatsApp also has been very popular okay um that's a newer thing probably in the last two years year or two and I think that's a relatively new thing for any kind of sort of shopping and I guess you can only do it if you've got a relatively small business but I think Mm. it's a quite a good way of interacting with customers it's Mm. quite a personal Mm. service Mm, and you can absolutely. send photos you know a lot of people want to see things visually and again with cakes it's really important the visual thing is really important mm, so mm. um that's why things like instagram work really well for cakes uh and if you want to you know the the plus on something like whatsapp or messaging is that you can send a picture or you can send a very quick query to people mm, mm. um but yeah the the website's been amazing amazing i mean we probably take 70 percent of our orders online now right okay obviously because you're you know takeaway only and yeah and also we direct people to the website um much more because it's an easy they can see the range rather than us going through the range you know in the days back back way you know way back when we started we'd had a book with photographs in and you'd look at the <laughs> pictures of the cakes and I mean now that just seems ridiculous doesn't it people think I'm talking about something about 50 years ago but um <laughs> yeah so you get all the pictures online you can it's very easy and you don't have you're not uh, constrained by time so if you can only look online at 10 o'clock at night then you can order a cake mm. at 10 o'clock at night you're not waiting yeah. to call a shop when it's open or you yeah. know, having or if you're abroad, you know, if customers order from abroad because they've got relatives or friends here, and it's yeah. all should be very easy. Again, you know, if you've got a product, if you make it really complicated to then buy it, or you have to go through, you know, I know of other businesses where you know they'll only take certain orders at certain times of day, and you can you've got to do X, Y, and Z. Well, I mean, you just get really bored really quickly when you go somewhere. Yeah. I mean, I would go somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What, what's the what's the latest time someone can order a cake for next day delivery? Up to about it's twenty four hours, so we're still right into tonight. We'd be taking cakes for tomorrow. 
Plus, nice. we have a service where you can call up on the day and we usually can get you a cake. It might not be the cake, your first choice, but right. we'll always try and get you something. And we bake everything on site. So everything's baked on site, which is yeah. fantastic. A, because the smell is really nice. So people know we are <laughs> doing what we say we're doing, not just buying a load of frozen cakes. And yeah, yeah. Um, also because the communication. So we can ask the chefs, can you make this for us? Can you do this? And we have very little wastage because we it's literally all coming up from the kitchen in the basement. Right, right, right. That's great. And you kind of are all working together. I mean, it's I think of it as kind of like an extended family. We all work mm. very closely together. Mm. And mm. I hope that people who come to work at, at the bakery really enjoy working because mm. Mm. I think that you work better if I mean like being a someone who starts their own business also as an employee you work better if you enjoy what you're doing of course yeah 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 and and do you do you try like, how do you think about that do you try to do certain things to to build morale and build team or make you know how, what's your sort of approach to being a good leader I try and uh, just it's a you know it's a it's a very fine balance between being a boss but also a friend or a nice person sort of I feel responsible for them all I feel that if people have come to work for me and I am paying their wages whatever age or stage they are in life that is a responsibility I I have to take on because they might mm. be depending on it for rent payments mortgage payments bills uh, caring for other people whatever they are mm. Mm. Um, I try and sort of get to know them as individuals and try and mm. look after them all so if we have long mm. days at work you know we buy food in for everyone's lunch or um if i have a lot of female staff if they're working really late i send them home in cabs um mm. i try and make sure they don't start too early in the morning look i'm sure i make loads of mistakes and mm. as i said i'm always trying to learn and do the and it's a fine line because I also know that I have to pay the bills so yeah, much as yeah. I'd like to say to them I'll oh, put your feet up or take the day off I know that I've got to pay x y and z bills so they have to keep working mm, and mm, I try mm. and also just be very present and be there and be available I mean maybe they're thrilled when I leave the shop because <laughs> I mean sometimes it must be <laughs> exhausting having the boss there but I try and be around and lead by example I guess I didn't want to be right. a boss that said you have to work 14 hours today but I'm not going to be here at all and if they see yeah and then it why would they work 14 hours if their boss is nowhere to be seen uh, you'll, you'll quickly sort of lose you know interest if you know your your boss isn't around or the owner you know you feel like they don't care or they're they're gallivanting doing other and things, working in food whether it's a restaurant or cafe or bakery or whatever there are long hours and you're on your feet yeah. all day you know you're not sitting down you're not resting it's physically it's very demanding mm. and you get tired and I think that if I wasn't involved and I wasn't interested how could I expect them to do it you know, it's all yeah. very well for me to say, yeah, you've got to sell all these cakes and make them all. They've all got to be on time. But by the way, I'm going out shopping. It, mm. I don't know. I just feel like that just sets a really bad example. I think also, especially because you're such a quite, quite close knit, you know, business, yeah. you, you're, you're, your sort of heart's on your sleeve almost or you know. Um, yeah, I mean, they know everything, you know, it's both good and bad. But of course, you know, my shop is not very different from my home. You know, I spend more time in my shop than I do at home for sure. Mm, mm. It's kind of like an extent. My mum lives down the road, so she's always in. I mean, all my staff know probably every single thing about my life. I mean, mm. it probably gives them a lot of laughs. But um, <laughs> I think you just have to be quite open. I mean, it is what it is. There's, yeah. I can't hide from it. It's a small shop. We work in a small environment and people either get it or they don't get it and that's probably the difference between people who sort of understand working for or wanting to have their own business and mm, those that mm. don't there's nothing wrong with the other ones it's just that you're either you either kind of get that and mm. you muck in and you're all in it together mm, or mm. it's not for you 
and that's totally mm. fine as well but it, yeah you know they're very different sorts of people yeah, i mean what's the sort of longest standing employee uh, i have a chef who um she's actually mongolian and she's worked for me for 12 13 years oh wow yeah and one of my i have a delivery driver who's been with me probably eight or nine years okay. so and then i've recently got a chef who used to work for me and she left i have quite a lot of young chefs come in Mm. and I really like that mm. and some of them are young you know I'm talking 18 19 20 mm. and this particular one worked for me and she left and she mm. wanted to go on and do other things and she was she'd say it herself you know she she was great we all really liked her but she her timekeeping mm. wasn't great and we had a few things anyway we all really <laughs> liked her left on good terms and then she emailed me last year and, and sent me the loveliest email and said working for you is the best job I ever had and I if there's any chance I could come back I would really love to so she's now back working with us and it's those are the <laughs> nicest Great. emails to get or people saying you know I loved working there or, or old staff pop in and see us and that's such a pleasure to me when people do that that's yeah, when you feel yeah. like you've done something right or you've helped set someone up on their path you know someone I've got another chef there at the moment who is going to go to culinary school because she's really she's only mm. 18 and she's really enjoyed working there and she's actually a fantastic mm. baker and, and cook mm. and she's really got into it so now she wants to continue her studies and mm. to work with people like that who are passionate about what they do I, I think mm. that's more important than the qualifications mm. Mm. passion over qualification yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah for anything actually you know, I don't have a qualifications in cooking or business. And I just really loved what I, I still love what I do. And mm, I think mm. that's kind of, in a way, yes, it's great to have people. I have some chefs who also have amazing qualifications, but you have to have the passion as well. Yeah. 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 That keeps you going. That keeps yeah. you going through the hard times. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't have it, I just you're going to yeah you you really are going to struggle because there are really hard times you know there are times when mm. you, uh, from just being physically so tired that you think you can't carry on to mm. tough times mm. you know business is tough mm. Mm. yep it's no walk in the park <laughs> <laughs> so um Martha uh, I can definitely talk Kate talk with you for the whole evening although <laughs> you're probably you probably can't um <laughs> Um, give us a little rundown of 2021 and beyond for for uh, Primrose Bakery. What's your any any good plans? Of of course, carry on what we're doing. I'm hoping, you know, as I said, lockdown's been amazing for us, and I feel very privileged that I've been able to work and you know have the amount of business I've had. So just really maintaining that. I'm assuming that when lockdown finishes, which will be great for us all in terms of business, there might be bit of a like downturn in that people will be going out and doing things quite rightly um so just hopefully maintaining the cus new customers and the existing customers we've always had um mm. again not in getting complacent mm. um not mm. assuming oh we've had a great lockdown so we'll be fine but thinking like mm. just always thinking ahead mm. um what can we do next you know how can we keep the customers that we've gained how do we look after all our customers and just keep delivering cakes that people really want to eat really and there's always something mm. I, I said to you we just launched these DIY boxes which have been really good um, and probably we haven't done our classes for the last year because we haven't been allowed to mm. so probably restarting those and just you know really keeping up with our quality of the cakes we make our consistency our service there's mm. always things to improve on always and yeah. um you just sort of have to at the beginning I always thought I'd achieve things and then that I kind of would get to a plateau and I'd mm, sort of mm. work something out and it'd be okay then now I know what to do and now yeah. I know that's not the case every single day is different and you just got to go with it go with it go with it <laughs> yeah and always like stay optimistic and stay enthusiastic and just yeah, go with it, really. How do you stay optimistic and enthusiastic? What's your what's your <laughs> <Good> secret? <question. laughs> 
I think because I really believe in what I do. I really believe in it. And I really enjoy working with all the people I work with. As I said to you about my daughters and my other staff, I just really, I really enjoy Mm. it. I find them, I find everyone really interesting. I love learning from the staff. I've got some amazing customers who kind of become friends along the Mm. way. And I still, and I'm really lucky, I still really, really enjoy mm, it. Mm. As, I mean, as I just, ha- I do. There are days when I'm tired and I don't particularly want to go to work, but not many actually. And as soon as I'm there, if I, you know, the days we used to go on holiday, when you come mm. back, it's the first place I want to go. Mm. Back to the shop. <laughs> so, yeah, back to the shop. I'd rather probably just go straight back to the shop <laughs> and I miss it. You know, I miss being there. And even on days off, we all go, we all go there anyway. <laughs> So we can't keep away from it. But that's a good thing, I yeah. think. That shows we must be doing something we really like. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it again it goes to the fact that you you followed your passion and um and now it seems like because you've sort of gone back to focusing on, you know, your one location, it's a bit more enjoyable as opposed to Yeah. I think that's right. Yeah. There were moments where it kind of had lost some of its enjoyment. I still enjoyed it but not as much as I have done in the last year for yeah. sure. And so I'm hoping that continues. I feel like it will. I feel like yeah. it, it uh, was really good yeah. and I never lost the passion for it. And I think that's probably key mm. really. Yeah. And luckily I still really like cake. So that's really and good. And so does the nation and you are bringing delight <laughs> to the nation. So there you go. You, you have, you know, your life purpose, you have brought many, many, um, delights to to people's um tummies and <laughs> <laughs> um martha uh super thank you for your time before we go um where can people find you or where should they go to find more about primrose bakery so the the uh instagram is just primrose bakery and the website is primrose-bakery.co.uk super and you should be able to just search primrose bakery and it come up and our shop is in primrose hill in northwest london great we're always there just drop, drop <laughs> and by. if you're if you're passing come I, by. I definitely will i just i need to i need to get involved <laughs> yeah you definitely do all right thank you so much for having me as well no it's been great thank you and um all the best yeah thank you very much indeed